So I was thinking about something when I was getting ready for this week's Sailor Says video. Mary Shelley was 19 years old when she created the basic story of Frankenstein back in 1816. And Frankenstein, the story of that man who went mad with his own scientific genius who created another person out of discarded body parts and lightning, is the base of all modern science fiction that can be credited back to. A teenage girl invented modern science fiction with two books, Frankenstein and then The Last Man a couple years later. A teenage girl is the reason that we even have things like Star Trek and Doctor Who, Star Wars, Mars Attacks, War of the Worlds, John Carter, Flash Gordon, Blade Runner, Clockwork Orange, even 1984. Natalie Portman can wear a shirt that says Stop Wars, that's stylized like the Star Wars logo, and be criticized for being a fake geek girl even though she was in the fucking movies. Seriously, bow down to the fucking Queen of Naboo. And a woman organized the letter writing campaign that eventually saved Star Trek from being cancelled in the first season. A woman organized the first Star Trek convention and also got NASA to donate money and all this stuff to the convention, which is why there is such a hefty focus on actual science at Trek cons. A woman was the first producer of Doctor Who and she fought to greenlight the Daleks from even existing. Nobody wanted to have the Daleks, but she was like, uh, no, this is actually kind of awesome. We should have that. And it's because of her that the show lasted longer than the original 13 weeks that it was planned for. It's been going on for 50 years, and they only were going to do 13 weeks of it. And that is all her, her doing. Women created fanzines back in the long ago days before the internet existed to circulate fan art and fan fiction. Fan fiction wouldn't exist nearly as broadly as it does today if Lady Trekkies hadn't existed back in the 1960s. We wouldn't have Next Generation Enterprise any movies about the original series, so all of the Wrath of Khan and the Search for Spock or the Star Whale movie, whatever you want to call it, none of the reboots even, none of that would have existed without these widespread fandoms that were circulating these fanzies created largely by women, and all of the Hollywood producers knew that. They're like, oh, all these people really enjoy Star Trek and really like doing these things. We should probably give them some more of that because that's how we're going to make money. I can walk into any comic book shop and feel immediately scrutinized unless I am with a guy. And even then, I'm annoyed because it is automatically assumed that I'm only there as the girlfriend who wants to be elsewhere and is going to roll my eyes the entire time. I mean, yeah, I'm going to be looking for Buffy comics, but that doesn't mean that I don't genuinely enjoy a comic book shop atmosphere. I would just enjoy it more if I wasn't being judged the whole time there while I was there. I mean, I go to a video game store and I get called sweetheart and get talked down to while I'm there. I can wear a fandom shirt and be bombarded by asshats demanding to know that I list all of the Robins who have ever been with Batman or who played the fifth doctor or just generally being mocked because I must only love Captain America because I think he's hot and I just get made fun of for wearing it because I must be doing it to get attention from guys when in fact I'm wearing it because I fucking like it and I want to support the thing that I like. I am not writing pages and pages of Steve Rogers subbing to Natasha Romanov because extensive character analysis analysis on my pet behalf has concluded that he is the subbiest masochist who ever did sub to anyone for your benefit. Nor am I writing about post-brainwashing recovery threesomes with Bucky and Natasha and Steve for your benefit either, because I'm pretty sure that's not any wish fulfillment on your behalf. I will readily admit that a lot of the nerdy things that I am into, but not all of them, were introduced to me by my male friends, but I can bet a lot of money that I am now ten times more heavily invested in those things than they are, and I can outclass them at any time with meta and trivia about said things. And I can double down on that bet when I suggest another equally nerdy thing to any males, not just my friends, they will probably not watch them or pay any attention to them because obviously a woman likes it, it's crap. It has happened to me at least six times and other women can sound off it's happened to them. We all know that pain where there's just some dudes who are like, hey, you should like the thing and we're like, hey, this is actually a cool thing and then you're like, hey, you should like this thing and they're like, meh. So let me just say, dudes, there are so many other easy things, way easier things that I can do to get your attention than to devote myself to obsessing about the Civic Rim, which was criminally ignored the Academy Awards and at least sound effects and graphics. I mean, seriously, effects? Like, Lone Ranger was put up for effects, but Pacific Rim wasn't? What the fuck even was that bullshit? And if you honestly believe that I'm into these things to get you to notice me, you need to get your eyes checked.